All right, everybody, buckle up, because today we're diving into a story, a real-life thriller. Oh, yeah. Set against the backdrop of paradise. Picture this. Okay. You're living on a boat in the Florida Keys, sunshine, turquoise water. Sounds relaxing. Maybe a pet parrot named Jimmy Buffett. Sounds pretty idyllic, right? It does. Well, that was the life of Edward Bozart III until it all went very, very wrong. Oh. Because today we're diving into a real-life murder mystery set against this backdrop of paradise. Okay. Think swaying palm trees, a hefty inheritance. That's right. But hold on to your sun hats because this case has more twists and turns than a hurricane party at a rum distillery. Wow. Um, I've got my mental notepad ready from the articles and case files that you shared. Yes. It seems like the truth is buried deeper than a pirate's treasure. Exactly. We're talking about the case that gripped Key Largo back in 2007. Okay. Edward Bozarth found dead on his own boat. Oh, wow. His wife, Denise, immediately becoming the prime suspect. Mm -hmm. Now, on the surface, it might look like an open and shut case. Right. But trust me, you'll see why this one went cold for years. Okay. And why it really highlights how that image most people have in their heads yeah. of a peaceful, live aboard community right. can be shattered. It's almost like the isolation of that lifestyle while seemingly idyllic yeah. becomes the perfect cover for secrets to fester. Yeah, it makes sense. Right. And secrets are definitely the name of the game here. Okay. So let's set the scene. It's July 2007. Ed Bozarth is found dead on his boat. Mm -hmm. The police, naturally, start by questioning his wife, Denise. But her reaction, or should I say lack of reaction, okay. immediately throws up red flags. Interesting. How so? Well, you know, investigators... They're trained to look for inconsistencies, behaviors that deviate from what would be considered typical reactions. Right. Everyone processes grief differently. Exactly. But something about Denise's demeanor, it just wasn't adding up. Okay. And to add fuel to the fire, we have Ed's son, Charles, providing some interesting insights into their relationship. Okay. He talks about a noticeable age gap between Ed and Denise. She was significantly younger mm -hmm. and hints at some underlying tensions. Apparently, Denise had experienced a more luxurious lifestyle, I guess you could say, right. while living with Ed's mother and wasn't exactly thrilled about going back to the, shall we say, simpler life on a boat. Uh, so like a clash between aspirations and reality. Right, exactly. Which happens a lot. Oh, yeah. And often can be a factor in a lot of crimes. It's like this subconscious whisper of what could have been just fueling, fueling resentment. Yeah. And speaking of fueling motives, let's talk inheritance. Wait. Like Ed's mother had recently passed away, leaving him a sizable trust fund. And that's where, you know, the money, the financial gain, that's a powerful motivator. Oh, absolutely. And in this case, it gets tangled up with the dynamics of their marriage, her apparent dissatisfaction. It's like someone tossed a grenade into an already shaky relationship, and are you ready for the plot twist? I think so, hit me. Because this is where things really take a turn. Okay. Enter Dave Campbell. Who's that? The Bozarth's neighbor, who just happens to be having an affair with Denise. Oh, wow. Okay, oh. so another person enters the picture, and what role does he play? Well, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Right. What's interesting is Campbell's initial narrative to the police is very calculated. Okay. He paints this picture of Ed being abusive towards Denise, even claiming to have seen a black eye on her at one point. So he positions himself as, like, the concerned friend. Right, the protector. Yeah. But here's the thing. The more we dig into Ed and Dave's relationship, yeah. the less concerned friend, it seems. Okay. They had a very strained relationship, often butting heads. So you're saying it was not a friendship, at least not a good one? Not really, no. So more like a tragic triangle. Exactly. This underlying tension between these two men, it just adds another layer of intrigue, doesn't it? It does. Was he truly a concerned friend, or was there a more self-serving motive behind his portrayal of Ed as an abuser? Was he covering his own tracks, trying to deflect suspicion? It's possible. Because, get this, Yeah. according to Denise's friend, Bonnie Colin, Denise had been dropping some pretty heavy hints about wanting Ed out of the picture yeah. permanently. What, like what? Like talking about staging an accident while they were working on a generator, stuff like that. And Bonnie, she goes to the police with this. She does. She becomes a key witness in all of this. Wow. Talk about chilling. Right. Mm -hmm. But hold on tight because just when you think you're starting to understand the players and their motives, uh, the story takes another unexpected turn. Oh, no. What now? Years pass. The case goes cold. Mm. And then like a bolt from the blue, 
Dave Campbell decides to change his tune. Yeah. It's like years later, he suddenly realizes he's holding a losing hand and decides, you know, time to reshuffle the deck. Wow. Instead of the concerned friend. Right. Campbell now paints himself as the victim. Okay. Claiming Denise offered him $10,000 to kill Ed. He flipped the script. Talk about a plot twist, right? Yeah. What made him come forward after all this time? That's the million dollar question. Did he genuinely fear for his safety? Oh. Did he see an opportunity, you know, years later to shift the blame entirely? Right. Or was this his way of finally, after all these years, clearing his conscience? You got to think, what's his angle? Exactly. Because now investigators, they have to go back. I know, right. And untangle this web of, you know, conflicting narratives. Years and years worth. Yeah, they have to look at the credibility of each player and try to figure out, is this new confession, is it the missing piece of the puzzle? Or is this just a desperate attempt to save himself? Exactly. Because we also have to remember who we're dealing with here. Right. Denise is no damsel in distress. <laughs> when the police finally catch up with her, she drops a bombshell of her own. Oh, really? What's that? She admits to killing Ed. She confesses. But insists it was self-defense. Wow. Hold on. So what's her story then? She claims that Ed, in a fit of rage, stood over her with a gun, okay. forcing her to defend herself with whatever she could find. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know it, a hammer just happened to be within reach. A hammer. Convenient. Right. It makes you wonder what really happened in those final moments. Yeah. Was she truly backed into a corner, terrified for her life? Or was this a carefully constructed story, a way to justify a premeditated act? It's a classic he said, she said. Right. But the stakes are incredibly high. Absolutely. And it really highlights, you know, the challenges that investigators face when you have these conflicting accounts. Especially when you consider that despite Demise requesting a lawyer, mm -hmm. the police, eager for a confession, right. continued their interrogation. Pushing for that confession. Yeah, and that's a big no-no, right? A big one. A violation of her rights. Exactly. Which ultimately rendered her confession inadmissible in court. So even if it seems like, okay, we got the confession, that's it. You would think. But if it's not done properly, it's useless. It's like trying to build a sandcastle with the tide coming in. Exactly. So with the confession unusable, the prosecution's case, it's significantly weakened. Right. What happens next? Well, Denise, facing a trial with uncertain outcomes, makes a decision, a calculated decision. Yeah. She takes a plea deal, pleads guilty to a lesser charge. Which is? Second degree murder. So not quite a slap on the wrist? No, not at all. She ends up serving 10 years in prison. Wow, and what about Dave Campbell? Oh yeah, what about him? After that bombshell confession, did he ever face any consequences? You'd think he would, oh, right? I mean, come on. But despite that dramatic U-turn, that direct accusation, mm -hmm. Dave Campbell was never charged in connection with Ed's murder. Wow. He walked away a free man. So Denise serves 10 years. Right. Campbell gets off scot-free. That's how it goes sometimes, the justice system. It's complicated. Yeah. This feels less like justice and more like a bitter compromise. It happens sometimes a lack of concrete evidence. Yeah. Conflicting accounts. It makes it incredibly difficult to secure a conviction. Right. So it's not always black and white. Not always. No. A lot of gray areas in these types of cases. And a lot of unanswered questions. Definitely. It's just crazy to think about, right, Ed is gone, Denise... She served time. Right. But she still maintains she acted in self-defense. Yeah. And yeah. Dave Campbell is out there somewhere living his life. Just goes to show this case, with all its twists and turns, it leaves us with more questions than answers. It really does. You know, did she really orchestrate all of this to get her hands on the inheritance money? Or was she really a battered wife just trying to survive? Driven to that desperate act. Yeah. yeah. It's like we're trying to piece together this puzzle yeah. But half the pieces are missing and the other half have faded with time. And then you start to wonder about Dave Campbell's involvement. Was he a mastermind? Right. Was he pulling the strings behind the scenes? Was he a pawn in all of this or was he the one, you know, kind of orchestrating everything? It's a classic example of how greed, the complexity of relationships, it can really yeah. make you question everything. It makes you wonder, like, how well do we really know anyone? Absolutely. This isn't just about a death on a boat in Key Largo. This is about the dark side of paradise. That's a good way to put it. The secrets we keep, the lies we tell. And the impact that those choices have. Because it's not just the victim. It's their families. It's the community. Everyone gets touched by this. The ripples just keep going. I'm still reeling. We started with this 
picture-perfect paradise. And somehow we've ended up in this maze of betrayal, deceit. And so many unanswered questions. Like, who can you trust? Even when it seems like you're living in paradise, sometimes it's not what it seems. No. So to our listeners out there, we leave you with this. Yeah. What do you believe really happened that day on Ed Bozart's boat? What do you think? Was justice served? Let us know your theories, because in a case this twisted, everyone's a detective.